Amen. Good morning. Good morning, St. Paul. We're in this place just another day. I'm excited about life. I'm excited about breath in my body. I'm excited that I can move my limbs. I'm so excited that I can be able to stand here today and worship in His name. So on this morning, we're just going to glorify His name. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. So as always, wherever you are, come on and worship with us. We're in this place. Hallelujah. Hey.
St. Paul family and friends, we're the Andersons. My name is Lamar Anderson and this is my lovely wife, Nikisha. We have the pleasure today of bringing you our scripture reading and prayer. Okay, our scripture reading today comes from Galatians 5, 16 through 23, and I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible version. I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh, for the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish, amb selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things, as I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Let's bow our head for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We thank you for this opportunity to talk to our friends and family of St. Paul. We come to you and we pray for our community, our local community and its leadership, also the leadership of St. Paul. We pray for those people who are going through something really bad within, the, within COVID. We pray for those people who have lost loved ones through this tragedy in regards to COVID. We now come to you and we hope that the word that they hear today from St. Paul touches their souls and brings them closer to you. All these blessings and many more, we pray for in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, have a great week, St. Paul family. Good morning, St. Paul. My name is Drew Hubbard and I'll be bringing you your morning announcements. We are so excited to announce our virtual spiritual practices workshop. In these sessions, participants will learn the importance of spiritual practices while they're working to grow deeper in their relationship with Christ. Sessions will include Praise is what I do, how your worship can lead to spiritual growth, cultivating a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with Jesus, sacred rhythms, spiritual practices that nourish your soul. Register today at spbaptist.org. Harvest Fest is just around the corner. Join us on Saturday, October 31st, from 2 to 3 p.m. in the St. Paul parking lot for a lot of candy and even more fun. Bring yourself and your kids in your very best costumes and join us for an amazing time. If you're interested in donating to help out Harvest Fest, you can drop off your bag of candy in the bin outside of the south entrance. Or if you wanna donate online, you can head over to spbaptist.org to give now. Next Sunday, October 18th is Pink Sunday. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month which means that St. Paul will be spending the entire month bringing awareness to breast cancer. So that means when you tune into church at 10 a.m. next Sunday, come in your very best pink outfit. This Sunday, we will be highlighting the stories of some members of the St. Paul family who have direct experiences with breast cancer. Hello, my name is Rachel Coleman and I am a 13 year breast cancer survivor. My inspiration for getting screened is because statistics tell us that early detection is the key to survival. 
I, along with so many others, are living proof of that. So if you haven't already, get your annual screening. Blessings to you all and stay safe. My name is Charlene Harris and my inspiration is my faith and walk with God and my loving husband, family, and friends. I am a breast cancer survivor. Yearly screening is important to me because I believe it saved my life. The breast cancer I was diagnosed with was found at an early stage because of the screening. The treatment was not fun. I'm sure had I been diagnosed after I'd start having symptoms, I'm sure it would have been a lot worse. But it still wasn't fun. I believe it saved my life. Please get screened. It may save your life. My name is Fran Armour. I am a survivor. And my inspiration for screening is the blessing that I received through early detection. Thank you. I am a survivor. And my inspiration to take action is for those who have been diagnosed with cancer, especially metastatic cancer. Jeremiah 29 11 says, but I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Keep fighting and keep the faith. Well, we want to say good morning, man. Thank God for this opportunity to uh, dig into his word. We praise God for the information about breast cancer and breast cancer awareness. We pray that you would uh, take advantage of the opportunity uh, to make sure that you touch base with your doctor and schedule an appointment if you haven't had one in a while. Uh, the information is there for it to be helpful to all of us. Or if you know someone else uh, who hasn't had a mammogram in a while, please encourage them uh, to get their mammogram. Uh, so we thank God for everything that God is doing. We celebrate him for the time of worship. I'm excited today about a new series that we're beginning today entitled, Where Do We Grow From Here? Where Do We Grow From Here? It's a teaching series, so we're going to spend a lot of time talking about some practical things that we can do as we look at the Word of God. It's going to be based out of Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 22 and 23 will be our focal verses for the next nine or ten weeks. Uh, we're going to walk through what's called the fruit of the Spirit, take some time and look at each element or quality of the fruit of the Spirit, uh, and then examine ourselves to see uh, how we're doing in those various spaces. Today is an introductory message, so just want to give an overview to make sure that we have context, make sure we have some foundational things to help us understand what Paul is talking about when he writes uh, to these believers who are in the region or area of Galatia. Where do we go or grow from here is the title. As we begin thinking about uh, this topic today, I was reminded as I visited a outdoor mall recently, we were unfamiliar with the location, not familiar with where the various stores were located. And as a result, we stopped at the directory. And when we stopped at the directory, if you've ever been to a directory in a mall or in an outdoor mall, oftentimes they'll have a dot that says, you are here. And then they give you an overview so that if you know where you're trying to go, you can look at the map and based on where you're trying to go, you can map out the route to get to where you're trying to go. Oftentimes in life, we are mapping out routes to where we want to go. When we're children, we taught, you need to think about what you want to do when you grow up, where you want to go, what's your destination. Once we become adults, we start thinking about what's my next career move, my destination, where do I want to live, what's my destination, what, where do I want to finish out at as far as my role and my responsibility, my destination. We spend a lot of time and a lot of energy thinking about where we want to go, our destination, but I don't think we spend as much time thinking about who do we want to be. Who do we want to be as it relates to our character? Who do we want to be as it relates to the qualities that people imagine and think of when they think about us? And this series is a series focused on our 
character like many of you as we've been dealing with shelter in place and times of quarantine and working from home, we've discovered in our home that our character is not all that we thought it should be. Our character development, we have not really matured in a whole bunch of areas in the way that we believe that God would have for us to mature. So this is a challenge for many of us as we've been quarantined and in the house with our spouse and our children, and they've been able to see some things come out of us that they didn't realize were on the inside of us. We've said some things and done some things that reminded us that we probably really need to grow up some more, that we have some room to mature, that we could work a little bit more on our character. So this series is going to focus on character development. How can we develop the character of Christ? How can we grow in the space of the character of Christ? Well, in order to set it up in Galatians chapter 5, we want to look at the context of Paul writing. And as he writes, we want uh, to look at what's the contrast that's mentioned. We're going to pick up at verse 22, but verse 22 starts saying, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But notice in verse 22, it begins with, but which suggests that this is in contrast to something else. Well, what comes before that? Verse 19, he talks about, now the works of the flesh are, and he gives a list. So verse 19, he gives the works of the flesh. Verse 22, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit is contrasted with the works of of the flesh. The fruit of the Spirit is mentioned in contrast to the works of the flesh. As he lists the things that talk about and highlight the works of the flesh, it is a reminder that the works of the flesh are reproduced by human effort. As Paul is writing to the church in Galatia, he's writing to them about the gospel, the importance of the gospel, the centrality of the gospel. Some people snuck into their community and were teaching them that you need the gospel plus the law. That it's good that you have the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you also have to commit to obey everything that's in the law. And if you don't obey everything that's in the law, then the gospel doesn't do you any good. And Paul is writing to them to remind them that no, it's just the gospel, if we lean upon the law, our doing, and add the law plus the gospel, then the gospel then is null and void. The gospel is a message of grace. It's a message that we don't deserve it, but God gives it to us anyway. It's a message that we can't earn it, but God gave it to us knowing that we couldn't earn it. So Paul is writing the book, the letter of Galatians to this church to remind them of the importance of the gospel. And when he writes to them, he reminds them that you have to be true to the gospel because if you think that it's about the law or you think that it's about human effort, then it will either lead to legalism or license. In the context, he's helping them to understand, you don't want to go down the road of legalism. Legalism says that I need to follow every rule that's laid out in the law, and if I don't follow the rule, then God won't be pleased with me. Notice how Paul addresses that in Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. He says, for freedom Christ set us free. Stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. Take note. I, Paul, am telling you that if you get yourself circumcised, Christ will not benefit you at all. Again, I testify to every man who gets himself circumcised that he is obligated to do the entire law. You who are trying to be justified by the law, alienated from Christ, you have fallen from grace. For we eagerly await through the Spirit, by faith, the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision accomplishes anything. What matters is faith working through love. He's encouraging them and reminding them, no, don't lean towards legalism. Don't have a mindset that you got to follow all of the rules or there's no way that you can be saved or have a relationship 
with God through Jesus Christ. No, it's faith in Jesus Christ that qualifies us for a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, not keeping the rules. So I want to encourage us as Paul encouraged them that he's making a contrast, not about the works of the flesh. It's not about keeping the rules, but it's about the gospel, which is a message of grace. So if you've had a keeping the rule mindset, please know as we talk about growing in our character, it will not be about human effort. When we begin to focus on the law, it leads us to a place of legalism or sometimes it can lead us to a place of license. So some people who are not legalistic, who don't want to keep the rules will say, because I'm free in Christ, then I can do whatever I want to do and I'll be okay. There are no rules. I can live however I want to live. And Paul says, no, 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 let's not get it twisted. That's not the case. We don't want to lean into a place of license where I can do whatever I want to do because grace is going to cover me. He speaks of that beginning at verse 13 of Philippians chapter 5. Listen to what he says. For you were called to be free, brothers and sisters, only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out or you will be consumed by one another. He says, no, don't think about having independence from God where you're free to do whatever you want to do, but instead allow yourself to be free to love as God has called us to love. So he's writing contrast works of the flesh, which can lead to legalism or works of the flesh, which can lead to license. And he's saying the answer to that is operating in love. You see, what he basically communicates is this idea that's communicated by John Piper. John Piper says, don't surrender the freedom we have in the all-satisfying Christ to return to the unsatisfying desires for mere physical pleasures. Don't become a captive to our flesh and works of our flesh and desires of our flesh, but instead let's operate according to the freedom that Christ has given and live lives in love. You see, the bottom line in the contrast, whether it's works of the flesh, but in contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is that true freedom leads me to move from living a life that is independent of God to living a life that is dependent upon the Spirit of God. So the encouragement in the context is that we develop a dependence upon the Holy Spirit to empower us to do what pleases God. So in the context, when we think about developing a dependence upon the Holy Spirit, Dr. Tony Evans gives the illustration of uh, the walking, the moving sidewalk in the airport, where if you've been in the airport, you can step on the moving sidewalk, and even though you're still walking, there is a power underneath you that's pulling you along. It, you're walking, but because of the power underneath you, it pulls you along at an easier rate and at a faster rate. Similarly, he says that there's a power on the inside of us that when we depend upon him, the Holy Spirit, he empowers us to be able to produce that which God wants to produce in our lives, which is the fruit of the Spirit. The contrast, but the fruit of the Spirit is contrasted with the works of the flesh. So he says, don't allow your life to be characterized by the works of the flesh, but instead we want our lives to be characterized by the fruit of the Spirit. And I don't know about you as we've been in shelter in place and been in quarantine, dealing with the pandemic, working from home, things of that nature. There are many times in my household where my behavior has been characterized by the works of the flesh, where I've operated in selfishness and things of that nature and not put the fruit of the Spirit on display. And if you're like me, today is a great opportunity for us to begin to reflect upon the fruit of the Spirit and say, God, where do we grow from here? Notice foundational truths as we look at Galatians chapter 5. I want to share a few things for us to think about throughout the series that I think can help us in processing what he's trying to communicate when he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Here is the first foundational truth, that it's the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruit of human effort. 
Notice, he says, it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's this idea that that the Spirit is the one who's going to produce this. Christ-like character is produced by the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us. I appreciate the statement made by Greg Allen. He says, the character of Jesus is not something produced by us, but it's something produced in us. The Spirit of Christ, Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, conforms us to the image of Christ, Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. The Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God that's on the inside of us is shaping us and molding us into the image of Christ, Romans 8 and 29. So the only way that we can have Christ-like character, which causes us to live like Jesus and love like Jesus, is that we allow the Spirit of God to be at work in our lives. So it's a reminder that it's not human effort. So as we begin to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, this is not something we can decide to do and we're going to do in our own power. No, it's something that we're going to have to rely upon the Holy Spirit to be able to do through us. You see, as we think about it being the fruit of the Spirit and not according to human effort, it's the fruit of of the spirit. When you think about fruit, fruit occurs over time. You can't just plant a fruit tree and then go out the next day and have a tree and fruit. Once you plant a fruit tree, you got to wait. You got to wait. You got to wait because it takes time for the fruit tree to grow and for the fruit to develop and for the fruit to get ripe and be ready to be received. It takes time. Likewise, I think he's trying to communicate to us that what the Holy Spirit is producing in us, the fruit of the Spirit, takes time. Character is developed over time. Please hear me. We can't microwave character. You've maybe seen people trying to microwave character. They'll think about character traits, and as they think about character traits or see character traits in somebody else, they think they can just take that character trait from somebody else's life and then put it in their lives, and it's just going to work. But it doesn't work like that. It would be the equivalent. We had some beautiful apples at home, so I thought I would bring one of them. It would be the equivalent of seeing beautiful fruit in somebody's life, and once you see the beautiful fruit in somebody's life on their tree, you pluck it from their tree, right? It grew from their tree over time, attached to a branch over time, but you pluck it from that tree, and then you decide, no, I want this in my life. Well, there's no way that you can attach it to your branch because it didn't grow from your tree, but because you want it so bad right now, you decide, you know what, I'm just going to get me a stapler and I'm just going to staple their fruit to my tree and it's just going to hang there and continue to grow. That doesn't work in real life as it relates to fruit and the same doesn't work in real life as it relates to our character. We can't just see character in somebody else, the fruit of the Spirit at work in somebody else's life, and then take it and say, I want it right now. No, character is developed over time. There is a process of surrendering and depending upon the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit to be at work in our lives so that the Holy Spirit in time can produce the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. The first foundational truth is that it's the fruit of the Spirit, and the Spirit produces the fruit in our lives over time. So if you are glad to hear that it takes time, maybe been beaten up on yourself because the character hasn't been coming as fast as you want, you can type in the comment section, I'm so glad it takes time. God is still working on me. God is still moving in my life. Just be patient. It takes time. We thank God that the first foundational truth is that the fruit is of the Spirit, and it takes time. The second foundational truth that we want to anchor ourselves in as we begin this series is that fruit is singular. Notice in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, that it's but the fruit of of the Spirit, not the fruits of the Spirit. It's singular and not plural. 
It's one fruit manifested in nine qualities, not nine fruits. It's one fruit manifested with nine qualities. The fruit of the Spirit is a complete package. And because it's a complete package, the Holy Spirit wants to develop all nine of them in our lives. This, this is not like a buffet where we can go and we can pick and choose which one we like. I like love. I, I like patience. I don't want self-control. I don't want gentleness. I don't want meekness. No, leave that there. Just, just give me some joyfulness or just give me that. That's all I want. I'm going to take those three and I'll be done. No, we can't pick and choose what we want. The Holy Spirit is working to develop all nine qualities which complete the package of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. He's trying to grow us in each area, and he's trying to grow us in each area at the same time. He's at work on each of them to mature us as a total person so that we can have the character and the conduct of Christ. You see, it's important for each of us to be evaluating how am I doing in this space? How am I doing with self-control? How am I doing with gentleness? How am I doing with kindness? We're evaluating how am I doing in each space because the Holy Spirit wants to mature me as a whole and not just certain aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. So when we think about the fruit of the Spirit, it's singular. And because it's singular, then I should be maturing in each area. And if I'm not maturing in each area, I need to raise the question of, Holy Spirit, what's going on? How am I blocking you from growing me so that each of the qualities of the fruit can be completed in my life? You see, the second foundational truth that we want to hang on to is that the fruit is singular. The Holy Spirit is trying to work to grow me and mature me as a complete package so that I can have total Christ-like character and not partial Christ-like character. A third foundational truth that we want to lock into is that the fruit of the Spirit is a byproduct of an abiding relationship with God. Remember, it's the fruit of the Spirit. And Jesus helps us in John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, when Jesus talks to us about abiding, he talks about he is the vine and we are the branches. The Father is the husbandman. As we abide in the vine, he says we will bear fruit. You see, the key to bearing fruit is an abiding relationship in Jesus Christ. Oftentimes, we want the results of a relationship with Jesus Christ without the relationship with Jesus Christ. Like, give me all this stuff, Jesus, but I don't, I don't really want to be close to you. I don't want to commune with you. I don't want to spend time with you. I, I, I don't want to grow in you. I don't want you to convict me. I don't want you to challenge me. I, I, I don't want the Holy Spirit to teach me. I don't want to be guided into truth. No, Holy Spirit, just give me the results of what an abiding relationship looks like. And we're reminded in John chapter 15 that abiding in Jesus is the key to fruit bearing. That we don't bear fruit without close communion with the vine. And because the grow of the vine is supply us what we need, the water that we need and the nutrients that we need and the minerals that we need, when we are connected to the vine, here's the result. Fruit happens. We have to stay connected to the vine because that's the key to fruit showing up in our lives. When I was thinking about this idea of staying connected to the vine and being encouraged to stay connected to the vine, I was reminded that sometimes we've had to call because we had problems with our TV or we've had to call because we had problems with the computer or we've had to call because we had problems with some other device. And I, I notice every time you call, no matter what company you call, especially when you're dealing with TVs or computers or devices that may have batteries and things of that nature, I notice when you call that they start with basic questions. We called about our TV and they, they asked us this basic question, is your TV plugged into the outlet? And I'm thinking, that's an obvious thing to do, right? There's no way I'm going to get power to the TV without the TV being plugged into the outlet. But they ask the basic question because it's obvious that many people forget to do the basic thing. 
Sometimes you call and it's a device that requires batteries and they ask you the question, did you put black batteries in the device? The reason they ask the question is because sometimes people forget to do the most basic thing to get the device to work. And I think the same is true in our walk in our relationship with Christ. Sometimes we forget to do the most basic thing in order for us to have the character of Christ. The basic thing to have the character of Christ is to have an abiding relationship with Christ. To be in communion with Christ, to be in connection with Christ, to be in relationship with Christ, to seek the face of Christ is the most basic thing for us to see fruit or character that looks like Christ. So maybe all of us need to encourage one another through the comment section, just abide, spend some time with Christ, connect with Christ, grow in Christ. Whatever you do, don't forget to abide in Christ because when we abide in Christ, guess what? Fruit happens. It happens as a byproduct of an abiding relationship with Jesus Christ. Therefore, a fruit problem is always a root problem. If we have problems seeing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, we need to check our connection to the source. We need to check whether or not we're connected to the vine. We need to check our relationship with God because whenever there's a fruit problem, it's an indicator that there's a root problem, that, that, that we're having a failure somewhere to stay connected to the source that will provide everything that we Need. If you're having a fruit problem in your life, a fruit problem of seeing the character of Christ, can I suggest it goes back to our relationship with Christ? You see, the foundational truth is that the fruit of the Spirit is a byproduct of an abiding, growing relationship with Jesus the Christ. The final foundational truth that we just want to embrace for this series is that Fruit describes who we can be, not what we need to do. Because this is about character, where do we grow from here? It's about us growing in character that it's important for us to be reminded that fruit describes who we can be, not what we need to do. This is not a list of things to do. We don't take the nine qualities of the fruit of the Spirit and, and check them off. Did I do this one today? Did I do that one today? Did I do that one today? No, no, it's not a to-do list, but it's about us becoming the kind of people that live this way. It's not a focus on our performance, but it's on who we're becoming as people. You see, when I grow to become a kind of person that is a loving person, you don't have to tell me to love because it's who I am I love. When I become a joy-filled person, you don't have to tell me to live with joy because I have an abiding relationship in Christ and it's who I am. Joy overflows. It's about us becoming these kind of people and because it's who we are, then it's naturally how we live or what we do. But the focus is not on the doing. Oftentimes, we want to try to do before we become. And the encouragement is to become first. And if we become first, then the doing will flow out of our being. You see, the fruit of the Spirit in our lives really does become evidence that we're walking with the Holy Spirit. It, it, it's evidence that, that we are surrendering to the Holy Spirit. It's, it's evidence that, that our God, our Father is at work in our lives, that, that he's influencing us and directing us, and we're surrendering to his influence. It's, it's evidence that we are children of God when we bear the fruit of the Spirit. It's evidence that the Spirit of God is at work. 
As I was thinking about this, I was reminded of some of the talk shows, crazy talk shows they have. Oftentimes, they'll have situations where they invite guests on and and they have shows that highlight, we're trying to figure out, is this person really the baby's father? And they go through a long show with a whole bunch of drama, but, but the essence of the show is that they do a DNA test. And after going through all the drama of the show, based on the DNA test, they either say, this is the baby's father father or this is not the baby's father, but it's the DNA test that that bears witness to the fact that they are or not the father. The fruit of the Spirit is a part of God's DNA, and when we have the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, it's evidence that the DNA of God is at work in our lives. It's evidence that we are the children of God, that, that God is working in us, that God is working on us, that the Spirit of God is growing us and maturing us. And because we are behaving like our daddy, we're living out of his DNA. It gives evidence to the fact that we're walking in the spirit of God. You see, the fruit of the spirit describes who we can be, not what we need to do. And when we just stay connected to God, grow in our relationship with God, then surrendering to the spirit of God shows up in the spirit producing fruit that looks like the character of God. We begin to bear witness that we really are children of the most high God. For this series, as we think about where do we grow from here, as we listen to different things, I want to caution us not to look at other people So each week for our application time, we're going to have questions that we use to really look at ourselves, to turn the mirror on ourselves. And and the questions are going to simply be this. We're going to examine our own heart. So as we think about the context and we think about the works of the flesh in contrast to the fruit of the Spirit, the question becomes, which one is dominant in our lives? Are the works of the flesh dominant in our lives or the fruit of the Spirit dominant in our lives? We want to examine our own heart and say, God, search me, know me, God, help me to see what's going on inside of me. Reveal it to me, God, so that I can see it. And then once I see it for what it is, we want to pray about it and ask God for help. So as we look at some of the foundational truths and we see, man, I've been trying to do a whole bunch of this in my own effort, in my own power. I've been relying on me instead of surrendering to God. So God, help me to rely less on me and surrender more to you. Or God, I've been trying to do this without an abiding relationship in Jesus Christ. Help me to prioritize an abiding relationship in Jesus Christ. We want to pray and ask God to help us to do what we need to do so that we can grow to have Christ-like character. And then we want to share whatever God is doing in our lives with somebody else so we can develop community, so that we can develop support, so that we can develop accountability. So if after praying, and I'm saying, God, help me to to draw closer to Christ and have a more abiding relationship with Christ and and to do it by spending time in the Word or time in prayer, then I want to share that with a friend to say, hey, here is my commitment this week. I'm going to spend this much time in prayer or this much time in the Word, and I'm going to write this down. And I just want to ask you to ask me about it because I'm praying about it and I'm trusting God to be at work in my life. I want to ask you to ask me about it so that I can grow to be who God has called me to be. And then we want to make sure that we obey or take action to say, God, whatever we say we're going to do, we want to actually do it. Whatever you speak to us as we're striving to grow in the fruit of the Spirit, to allow your DNA to be evident in our lives, God, help us to obey what you say to us. So, God, we commit to do what you tell us to do, when you tell us to do it, how you tell us to do it, so that you might be glorified. Because the fruit is never to benefit the fruit. The fruit is to bring attention to the tree so that we don't get the glory, 
but God gets the glory. See, God wants to produce the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, wants to grow us and mature us in the fruit of the Spirit so that when people see the character of Christ in us, since they know us, they know it's not us, but Christ at work in us, and as a result, God gets the glory. The introduction to where do we grow from here, sharing the context and some foundational truths. And I pray that as we think about the context and the foundational truths, that we would begin to examine our own lives. We provided some discussion questions to help us, just raising questions. How has your character been tested uh, or exposed during this stay at home and quarantine and, and sharing a story of how somebody else's character has been a blessing to you? Or how do you understand the difference between our role and God's role in us growing and maturing to become Christ-like? Or which qualities of the fruit of the Spirit are you most looking forward to learning about? Or which qualities of the fruit of the Spirit are you struggling with the most? As we raise those questions, we want to grow as we respond one with another. So you may be in conversations with some people. If you're having a watch party, maybe you all can spend some time together talking about these questions immediately after this service. Maybe you have some people, you're not doing a watch party together, but you know they've watched the service. Maybe you can give them a phone call after the service. Say, I just wanted to connect to see if we can talk about those questions. If you're going to have a family meal after the service, I want to encourage you during your family meal to talk about the questions, to say, how do we grow as a family to have more Christ-likeness in our lives so that each of us can be more faithful in living like Jesus and loving like Jesus. I want to encourage you to reflect upon what you've heard today because the goal is not just that we be hearers. The goal is that we would be doers of God's Word. And as you reflect upon the Word today, as always, we encourage you, if you have a prayer request, you can type it in the comments section. Uh, if you are concerned about something you want other people to pray with you about, it may not be directly related to you, may be related to some other people or something going on in the world. Just type it in the comments section, and we want to partner together in prayer. We want to encourage you as you reflect upon the Word. Uh, we're thankful. Our praise team is going to come back, and they're going to minister a song just singing in a sweet way that brings glory to God, the fruit of the Spirit. And I want to encourage you as we hear this song over and over in different ways throughout the series to allow this song to minister to you. My prayer is that by the end of the series that this song would be the song of our hearts, that we would constantly be singing it and giving glory to God for what he's trying to do in our lives. So I'm going to bow and lead us in a word of prayer for a moment, and then we're going to worship God as we celebrate the one who is at work in us. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you that we don't have to be dominated by the works of the flesh, but you've given us your Holy Spirit to live on the inside of us, and as we surrender to him, that he can grow us in Christ-like character. We pray, God, that you would help us this week as we reflect upon your word to surrender to the Spirit, to become more dependent upon the Spirit, to constantly examine our lives, to see if we're reflecting more of the fruit of the Spirit or the works of the flesh. Our heart's desire is that your DNA might be evident in our lives, that people might look at us and see your power at work because of how we live and because of how we talk and because of how we interact. That no matter what takes place on the news and no matter what takes place on our jobs, God, that we would live like Jesus and love like Jesus. And it would be evident as people encounter us. So bless us now, God, as we hear this song reminding us of the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you for wanting to do a work in us. Thank you for wanting to grow us so that we're conformed to the image of your Son. Be glorified is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
So we are so thankful today just for uh, that song to remind us of the fruit of the Spirit. I pray uh, that it catches hold of your head and your heart and that you're able to hum it throughout the week and reflect upon the fruit of the Spirit at work in your life. Our prayer uh, is that God would grow each of us so that we are more like Christ this week than we were last week. So we encourage you, keep on doing what you're doing. Continue. If you haven't uh, registered to vote or voted yet, do that. Uh, we want to encourage you to participate in classes and the opportunities to connect. Uh, thank you so much for your giving. For those of you who continue to give, we praise God for your giving and the support that you provide. You can give. If you are a first-timer utilizing our website, you can give on the St. Paul app. You can text to give uh, whatever way you feel comfortable. We thank God for your financial support that enables us to do what we do uh, and reach more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray this week that God would bless you and we pray that he will keep you. We pray that he would make his face to shine upon you, that he would be merciful to you. Uh, so we want to just end up with a closing word of prayer just to bless you. Father, we pray that you would bless your people. Help us as we go forth throughout this day. Uh, that we would be able to allow the Spirit of God to be at work in our lives. Help us to surrender so that he can produce in us what he desires to produce in us. We want people to see Jesus when they encounter us. So blessed that that would be the case, whether we go to the store, whether we go to work, wherever we may go. Allow that to be the case this week is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray that you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you real soon.